Today we are here thanks to the Mumbai International Film Festival for a series of masterclasses and in conversation sessions. I am Ayushi Dolakia, your host for this afternoon. A gratitude also goes to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, the National Film Development Corporation, the National Film Archive of India, alongside the Satyajit Ray Film and Television Institute, Kolkata. A big thank you to everyone who has made this possible today. Our session today will explore the journey of crafting unique intellectual property through the art of animation by dissecting successful examples like Ailan and Chota Bheel, we will discuss how animation can be harnessed to produce distinctive and marketable content. We will delve into various strategies and approaches to tap into the imaginative power of animation to forge valuable intellectual property. Welcome with a round of applause our panelists for the day. Let's hear it for Mr. Naman Ramachandran, a well-known journalist and critique in the world of Indian cinema. Mr. Bijoy Arputaraj, CEO of Phantom FX Studios and VFX Director of Ilan. Mr. Rajiv Chilaka, CEO of Green Gold Animations, creator of my childhood favorite Chota Bhim. Can I hear a little bit of more applause? Let's get this energy up and high. Joining them, we have Ms. Anamika Jha, a specialist in legal IPR. And Mr. Ashish Kulkarni, Chairman of AVGCXR Forum, Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Leading our discussion today is Mr. Ashish Kulkani himself, a key figure in the animation and gaming industry. Let's give a warm welcome to all our panelists and our moderator. Audience, we will also be taking your questions at the end of the session, so please hold on to your hearts and your queries. Now, I would like to invite um, D. Ramachandran, General Manager of NFDC, to come and felicitate our esteemed guests. So, and now may I request Mr. Ashish Kulkani to please take over and get this conversation started. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot for a wonderful introduction. And uh, we have a great panel today. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, the Information and Broadcasting Ministry and NFDC to put this uh, panel together. Uh, of course, uh, you know, we as a country have grown more uh, as in services country, uh, of course the cinema doesn't uh, fall into that because we had our own cinema for 110 plus years. Uh, whereas uh, when it, uh, when animation began <coughs> and the VFX began, we actually uh, were under the IT 
ES, IT Enabled Services uh, classification. And extending from there, we were more known as a services industry. Uh, once we have learned the art and craft of uh, delivering uh, world-class animation and visual effects, uh, some uh, you know entrepreneurs decided to go the IP way, and uh, it required a big courage in India uh, to actually create your own IP and actually look at how that can start making sense uh, to build an IP and a successful IP. And that's where we have two examples today as a case study. Uh, one is uh, a Chota Bhim, uh, which is actually seen the 360 degree. And then uh, in, in case of visual effects, we've always known that uh, visual effects, even today, is almost 100% services business. Uh, but there is still an opportunity whenever uh, there is very something very special coming into the visual effects storytelling that uh, one could actually look at creating an IP out of that and the visual effects stu studio can dare uh, to invest into that kind of film as a, as a co-producer and uh, also look at uh, owning the IP and taking it forward and that's why there's a very careful selection of uh, these two case studies that actually have been uh, you know putting India into a different orbit altogether. So moving forward, I think uh, let's start with IP and then we will go to the rest of the ecosystem. Uh, my first question of obviously is to Anamika. Uh, Anamika, you know, you being, uh, you know, you, you have a very interesting branding of uh, attorney of uh, creators. And, uh, uh, you know, creators normally are very careless people. They uh, they don't believe in filing taxes. They don't believe in, uh, I mean to say they forget um, but they actually uh, they forget to even register an IP. So, you know what goes in according to you. Uh, you know when you want to build a successful IP, what are the steps that one should take uh, to really see that the IP uh, sees a life cycle, and where does it start, and how do you really take care of the IP? Thank you, Asish. So it's a very uh, interesting question that uh, how to protect your IP. Uh, before that, how to build your IP. But I would say that most important thing is first to know your IP. Because uh, most of the time, we do not understand what exactly, when we talk about IPR, intellectual property right, what exactly it is. Being a creator, first of all, you should understand. It is a bundle of rights which is given to the owner or author of that idea. Means it is a bundle of right, exclusive right, given to the creator of an IPR, yeah? So when once you create anything, for example, in this case, as we have a very successful example of, uh, as you know, that a very uh, successful example of Chota Bean, where you have created a character, but then along with that character comes a bundle of rights you have the right to replicate that character. You have the right to create a derivative work. For example, we recently we have, uh, you know, a real life actor playing the role of Chota Bhim. Means character is that only, and we have some new dimension of work. Similarly, making it available to the public, yeah? So you being the owner of the work have this right to make it available to the public. So all these bundle of rights comes with the IPR. There are various kind of IPR, but for, for, you know, for creating a character, copyright is the most important IPR we talk about, yeah? Along with that, we talk about trademark, because, uh, because your character becomes your trademark as well. Now coming to the registration of the IPR. So registration of the, so in India, we do not need a mandatory registration of a copyright. The moment you have created, for example, an artwork, right? So, and you have all the proof of that creation that you have created it. Then you get the IPR. You get the copyright on your character. But why registration is important? Registration is important because that gives you a proof. Because then you, uh, if you have to prove that, okay, you are the creator of the IPR, then you have to give a lot of circumstantial evidence if you haven't registered it. But the moment you register it, that is sufficient to give an evidence that you have created, you are the owner of that work. 
Yeah, but my question to you is that, uh, you know, animation uh, storytelling takes a long time to create. If I register my script, for example, or if I register my story or a character design, then it's suddenly available in the public domain. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can be, you know, uh, you know, with little modification, people can cheat and create another thing. Uh, so how does that play out? Because uh, we feel very unsafe uh, registering it uh, in the copyright on the day one. Okay. So as you said, uh, you you talked about the infringement now. So being a author or being a owner. If you own a work, you have protects a legal protection against the infringement as well, yeah. correct? So suppose you have created this character, and now somebody, some copycats goes and uh, you know replicate the character and all. But as I said, the replication is only your rights, correct? So now, as you said that they can make us some modification here and there. So even that is not possible because we have a concept of substantial similarity in law. Means once you have created a character or or an IPR, then if there is a substantially similar thing created, yeah, then you can so very well sue the person who has created that substantial similar thing. Ha! Huh, idea is not protected. So for example, we have created a alien, for example, as 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 the example of Alanis. But we also had another alien concept in Jadu, in form of kuch, in film Kuch Kuch Hota Hai. Both are conceptually, yes, there are similarity. Both are aliens, both look different. They have a comedy aspect attached to it. But we cannot say that it is a substantially similar character. Yes? So if you create something very similar to that, where we, where a lay person can, by looking at the character, they can say that, okay, these are the similar. In that case, you have a very well protection and we have a very well developed jurisprudence in India as well, where you can get a protection, where copycat can be, you know, they, they have to pay you, they have to compensate you. So all those legal regime are here, here. So in my opinion, first of all, while creating your IPR, make it very distinctive. Make it a, you know, individual in itself. You have to make all those investment in the first space. Then, as you said, don't forget to register. Registration gives you an evidence. Registration gives you, uh, you know, you can claim your ownership even if without registration you have, but it gives a proper evidence. And then third point is that, you know, just passionately protect your IPR. If somebody, you feel that, okay, without your permission, they are using their character on their shop or they are using their character here and there, just do not let that happen because claiming your IPR is also very important where you have to rigorously protect, file for the, you know, uh, cease and deceased order, pro send them a legal notice because claiming your IPR gives the value to your IPR. So that is the third step. I, I think I, I'm going to come back to you in terms of uh, protection and monetization as well, but the law of copyright says that if challenge in the court of law, whosoever can convince that they had the evidence of that idea or a design or a character first will be granted the copyright. And that's why this is very important. So coming to Rajiv, uh, Rajiv, first of all, a uh, hearty congratulations on the live action film uh, that uh, has been created. Thank you. Uh, I think one of uh, uh, one of the Dabang uh, creators of India, uh, who actually, uh, you know, year after year surprised uh, our industry with uh, unique creations on uh, Chhota uh, There was a lot of rules and regulations that uh, international. Uh, animation uh, creators because we were not the first country to create animation so we came almost after 90 years of existence of animation uh, to start creating it and they wrote uh, unwritten rules uh, and always said that the character should do this and character should not do this and character uh, has a lot of do's and don'ts but uh, this uh, man sitting next to me Rajiv uh, took all the bold steps and he did everything and he proved them wrong year after year. So big round of applause to Rajiv for having such a bold <laughs> decision. So people said that don't play with uh, your character. And you know when the Chota Beam happened and uh, at one point in time, you know, it happened with Beam stories and then suddenly the requirement of 200 episodes came in. And today we have more than 1000 episodes. 
of Shota Beam. And when you actually create thousand episodes of Shota Beam, it's it's a brand uh, creation of a character. The kids uh, into that age want to see their character year after year. So I would like you to take us through as to what went into your mind as you created the first character and then looked at creating the SKUs and going to the next level. I'll come to the Netflix a uh, little later because that was a game changer again and then come to the life uh, thing. So if you can take us through that story, if you want to play the video. Uh, okay. Uh, hi everyone. The, I think I'm pretty honored to be uh, being among case study as uh, part of Chota Beam team. So I want to thank all the team members at NFDC for having me, Information Broadcasting, uh, Gauri, Ashish sir, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here. And I'm always uh, happy to share the story of how we made things. So back in 2001, uh, I just came back, I studied animation in the US, came back to India and was figuring out what to do. And we had a team of four people. And when with team of four people, uh, what we were trying to do was, okay, now what do we do? We can't do service work with four people. We went and approached a lot of people. They said, we need 100 people studio. We didn't, uh, so we were not really organized. Animation was very nascent. So we were figuring out what to do and uh, started doing a little bit of work for advertising and other uh, things. And then uh, obviously animation was the passion. And then obviously when you talk about uh, uh, doing something, first thing that comes up is you take characters from history like, you know, Vik Vikram Betal or um, Akbar Birbal or Krishna. Then uh, we started doing, uh, we started with Vikram Betal and then we did Krishna and then when we were doing Krishna, there were almost 16 companies doing Krishna. So one as a small company, including Ashish company, he was doing Krishna himself and the quality was outstanding. So we were not even in competition with him. But we were little very, felt very insecure because as a small studio, whatever we are making, how do we sell it, how, what, how do we monetize it when 16 other companies with funds are going, about, going at it. And I realized quickly, going and tapping into the public domain will be a big mistake in the future. Then I realized still broadcasters only want Indianized content. They, they were asking for, uh, I mean, I want characters from history. So that's when I came up with the idea of uh, Bhim. Basically, Bhim is not Mahabharata's Bhim. Bhim is inspired from that character. And I thought it will be a great thing because people will be easy to bring the first, I mean, like if we had called, instead of Bhim, we called him Harish or Naveen or something, I don't think it would have been this kind of hit. I think naming the character is the first step, we put the right name. And 2003, I came up with the idea. 2004, we set up Green Gold Animation. Uh, and then from there, it took us almost four years to actually sell the character. One year into production, then April 6, 2008, should have been went on air. So it was something, it is not, you cannot convince people, especially everyone who wants to see Indian animation is what we heard. We lit, literally ridiculed by everyone saying, you know, you want to do IP, you have, how many people you have? I said eight, eight people now. So the eight people who create IP are joking. So it was, we were literally ridiculed, but I was not so smart, so which was good. I went went on and on and on relentlessly. So then the, the other challenge was one, if, even if you get the project, how do you produce it was the biggest challenge. And uh, so we, I mean, that's a long story, so I won't get into that. So we had the good fortune of producing Vikram Betal and Krishna with Cartoon Network and then they saw that the ratings were very good. So they gave, so the next idea I gave, which was Choda Beam, they immediately said yes. I said, what do you think you'll do for us? I said, I'll give you one TBR. You promise that? I said, I promise you that. And that's it, we signed the contract, we produced Beam and it delivered more than 1.2 rating, which today in today's television world, it's not possible. So, so they were very, very thrilled with the success. But with the first season being successful started, now how do we produce more? So we had to expand, we had to bring teams, we had to train, we had to... There were so many challenges. So from there, so we started like doing 13 episodes in the first year. And today we have done 16 years. This we just completed on April 6, 16 years of Chota Beam. 
and this year we have ironically we are producing after 16 years the most ever produced till now 79 episodes still it is doing extremely well at the uh, at the television uh, this thing and with uh, like six uh, spin offs were created out of uh, chota beam uh, you know for we've done we took some to disney some on pogo itself and uh, something on netflix i think he's going to ask me the question later so i'm going to hold on to that but yeah it's been uh, i mean and like him today like luckily uh, i used to attend all these sessions so i used to hear ashish ji and other senior members back then at fiki and nascoms and i learned that i have to register register my character so i was uh, then i did that in the early stage itself and today last uh, just a few months ago chota beam is awarded as a well known trademark which i think she will be the right person to talk about the importance of being declared as well known trademark i think uh, only 170 companies in india uh, out of that most of them are international companies like apple microsoft and all so we became probably one of the first animation characters to be recognized as well known uh, mark which is i think it's a phenomenal achievement because it, thank you it's not something that has been done before but of course i mean see the most important thing is you know they say a journey of 1000 miles starts with first first step and that's how we started and we still feel we are at the first step because the challenges are every every year it is a new challenge so being part of ip you know we every year still we are figuring out how do we pay salaries on 31st so that challenge is continuous for this industry so we are working ashish ji and munjal and other people are working with the government to bridge that gap we hopefully find that solution but thank you so, sir for your support so rajiv you know what made chota beam successful was not definitely the broadcasting alone broadcasting of course uh, brought the character in every home but um, you know there is a 360 approach that you actually gave uh, to the character in, in fact uh, you went to any airport we could see chota beam uh, stores there and there were many right from t-shirts to keychains to story books to pencil box to the school bag to the shoes to whole lot of things uh, so what goes in creating a brand as a you know character brand uh, with all the SKUs that you create around it. Uh, so how was that journey and why you decided to do, you are the first one to create a 360 approach in India? Yeah, uh, I think one, like I mentioned earlier, like I was, uh, I studied in the US animation and all. And again, when you see what Disney has done, I think the great thing, advantage for us who's coming after others is you can quickly learn what the world is doing. And I saw what Disney and other international companies uh, from the US and Euro, they were having this merchandise. I mean, the, how do you uh, show that the character is successful? You have to have merchandise that is selling or pirated copy on the streets and railway platforms and bus stops and other places. So I realized that, okay, if we need to know how we, uh, uh, so how we should, whether our character is working or not, you generally know, don't know from TVR ratings. Yeah. So we luckily got once uh, a booth in which we just printed some mugs and t-shirts and we tried to uh, sell in the booth and within one hour the whole merchandise was sold out. So that's when I realized that this got huge potential. So our merchandising storehouse, storeroom was about 300 square feet when we started. Today we have 20,000 square feet area of storage itself for our merchandise. Wow. So I, I remember when we did Little Krishna. Oh, and we did a, you know, study. Of course, we had a lot of do's and don'ts with Little Krishna, but uh, one of the largest selling items uh, out of merchandise was uh, exam pad. And people, the youngsters, the kids thought that exam pad would bring them luck uh, to get them through. Uh, so, Naman, my question to you, you know, uh, it, you actually uh, stay in England, you cover uh, in variety, series of interviews and you study this industry very closely uh, but the thing is that the character brands is a very unique uh, way of uh, storytelling and and you know uh, our topic today is to uh, look at building a character brand to the films and you know the shows that we do uh, you know we have a unique examples from japan uh, where hello kitty was a drawing and the drawing became 
uh, character and animation came maybe uh, 15, 20 years later. And uh, that's a, uh, animation still didn't become popular. Uh, like this, they have large number of, uh, you know, uh, characters coming out of Japan and uh, Korea, where character brand itself has a huge potential to be uh, becoming, uh, you know, universally known and uh, the merchandise starts selling and probably the films come later. In many cases, the comic book happens first and then the film happens. Uh, so, what's uh, your take on uh, these two characters that we're going to discuss today? How do you think the journey uh, for these characters to become international uh, would un unfold in the future? Well, the, the first step uh, for any Indian character to become international is for the for the big broadcasters to uh, broaden their horizons. So I speak frequently to you know the at least the two big uh, broadcasters who cater to the children's market, and uh, they are at, at the moment they are content with uh, you know catering to the the local market because India is a massive market, and uh, you know you don't really need to look abroad to make your money, but if you do, and uh, and if you own the, I mean, Rajiv is a good example. Instead of earning a hundred rupees, you can earn a hundred thousand rupees, yeah. right? And uh, I see no reason why these popular Japanese or Korean brands, uh, as you mentioned, and also things like, I mean, I live in the UK. Thomas the Tank Engine uh, speaks not just English. He, uh, he, um, it uh, it uh, speaks uh, Japanese, Korean, Hindi. Um, so, uh, so I see no reason why a homegrown character, even a complicated homegrown character with a lot of backstory and history from not just the Ramayana and Mahabharata, but also from the Panchatantra, the Hitopadesha, etc. We, we have the richest uh, base of stories in the world, you know, more than anybody else. But it's just that only we see it. Yeah. So the approach has to come from within and uh, properly uh, IP copyrighted as an Amika will advise, and uh, and then start uh, then start going abroad, and then where people like uh, I come in as a me come in as a journalist is that uh, we start write, writing about it. Like uh, Chota Beam, uh, I've written about even most recently, uh, maybe about two three weeks ago yeah. uh, in Variety, and um, uh, it just. Uh, People need to know about it. So once you get into the international trades and mainstream press, and then you know people are exposed to it. And, and once the parents are exposed to it, they can expose their children to this content. Yeah, uh, I think uh, before I go to uh, Vijay, I think one more quick question. I will then we'll shift to films. One is that you know, uh, Chhota Bhim is uh, built with a broadcasting first as a as a property and then came all the SQs, uh, then came the international distribution uh, of uh, Chota Beam into various countries. Uh, but I think the biggest uh, change that we had seen was uh, an invention that you did with uh, Mighty Little Beam. So Mighty Little Beam is a younger version of Chota Beam and uh, it actually debuted on uh, Netflix and it suddenly became very popular, it doesn't have uh, language, uh, it means there's no character speaking there, but it's all with the music, but it actually went on to become the most popular kids' property on Netflix, and amongst the top five prop properties between family and kids all put together globally. Uh, so that's a big, big success, in fact, some Indian property trying to do that. So what happened when you decided to bring a younger version of Beam. Uh, what went through your mind as to how do you bring that differentiation? So uh, there's a backstory sir, that I'll tell briefly. So uh, we were pursuing, we wanted to be on Netflix that was one of our dream since 2012. And we were constantly, that time my team member Govind, I think you know him, he constantly wrote emails to Netflix to give an appointment so that we can showcase Beam uh, on Netflix. So we constantly wrote for four years and finally some odd event, we met them in uh, Korea and then we got introduced in 2016, I had a meeting with them 
And ironically, that same year, Amazon Prime came to India, opened Prime, and they bought our entire catalog for OTT. And they said, we want to buy uh, Chota Beam. I said, I'm, I mean, it was just weirdly, but it's only a month ago we sold entire catalog to, uh, to Amazon Prime. Then they said, oh shit, then what can we do? Uh, I said, like, okay, um, are you, can I give you another show? They said, no, no, we want something to do only with Beam. Because that's, uh, usually that's the way Netflix operate. They won't go with a popular character or a popular author or popular actor or something like that. Then I said, okay, then uh, uh, then I came up with the idea. So it was not a planned uh, thing. It was uh, just ha something that happened. Then I mentioned to them, what uh, would you be interested in Baby Beam? So we will have a preschool version. And preschool is very big on international yeah. markets. So we pitched that idea. They said, okay, why don't you uh, make a prototype and show it to us? Then we made a whole prototype, five minute uh, short episode on Mighty Little Beam. So we called it initially Baby Beam. Then we renamed to Mighty Little Beam and pitched it to them. They loved it. And then they greenlit the show. It took us about uh, one and a half years to make it. And we made it in 3D. And then it was, uh, so it went viral. And actually initially when they made, they made it for the, Indi because they were opening Netflix in India, they were made it for India thinking Indians will watch it. but. It what went, it went viral. I think in South America, North America, Europe, and pretty much every world uh, around the world, it became a viral hit that it went on to become the number one preschool show on Netflix as well as number two on Kids and Family. Yeah. So th that's a phenomenal achievement for uh, India. How many seasons have you done? Uh, we have done in all four seasons. Yeah. Three seasons of Mighty Little Beam, and in the fourth season is actually a spin-off from there. There, wherein Beam goes to school, yeah. which is called as a Be Mighty Beam's Playtime. Okay. So we technically have another spin-off. So you you have a growing character now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think that is something uh, we are fortunate, and yeah. it's uh, it's some. But what the most important USP has always been that boys like to be strong. Yeah. And that's where we connect whatever age boys, they want to be strong. You know, they immediately they eat and they want to punch you in the stomach. <laughs> anyway, nowadays girls also want to be strong, but we need to make some girl properties. We'll discuss that later. <laughs> so, coming to Vijay, Vijay, uh, thanks for the patience. We spent 30 minutes already. Uh, you know, when everybody in visual effects all only thinks about the services business, which films are getting made. Uh, you know, we have a very interesting phenomenon that's happening all over the world right now. Earlier, there used to be two people, the director and the cinematographer. And then came uh, the art director in 90s. So there was a triangle. Right now, we are uh, actually inventing a quad. Uh, the director, cinematographer, art director, and visual effects director. Because visual effects actually is taking precedence in every movie, every ad film, every television series, every OTT series. It cannot be completed without visual effects today. But when everybody is thinking of services, what made you, you know, think and invest into uh, a movie which has got a character, uh, which is a visual effects movie, but also has an animated character in it. So what went around and when in the life cycle, you decided that you need to own and become a co-producer. Uh, thank you, Ashish and uh, NFTC for having us uh, here. And uh, yeah, before I uh, talk about that, can I just play yes, this clip so that, uh, you know, because uh, we are not that famous as Chota Can you Beam play Ailan? <laughs> yeah, can you please uh, play the Phantom FX? <laughs> In a cinematic universe filled with wonder and intrigue lies the groundbreaking project Ayalan, where reality blurs with fantasy and visual effects come alive. Meet Phantom FX, the visionary powerhouse behind the magic of Ayalan, under the leadership of CEO and VFX director Mr. Bijoy Aputharaj. Phantom FX assembled a team of over 650 talented individuals spread across multiple cities in India. Bijoy worked closely with the film director and the Phantom FX team, guiding them through every stage of this monumental task. 
It all began with storyboards and concept arts, laying the foundation for the breathtaking visuals that graced the silver screen. The team meticulously crafted 3D models, including the awe-inspiring Alien, which underwent multiple iterations to capture the director's vision. Extensive research and development were conducted even before the shoot commenced, saving valuable time during post-production and ensuring unparalleled quality. A practical set was meticulously built, providing the backdrop for the epic adventure. Despite challenges such as the elephant sequence, Phantom FX CG team rose to the occasion, delivering remarkably realistic creatures. From alien spaceships to menacing robots, Phantom FX's expertise in CG brought to life a plethora of otherworldly elements each seamlessly integrated into the fabric of the story. Utilizing both CG and 2D effects, Phantom FX achieved stunning visuals, exemplified by scenes such as the intense energy clash between the protagonist and the antagonist. With state-of-the-art motion capture and facial capture technology, Phantom FX breathed life into the alien character, imbuing it with a sense of realism that captivated audiences. Custom tools developed by Phantom FX enhance the pipeline, empowering artists to work efficiently and effectively ensuring the timely completion of this monumental project. Ayalan represents the culmination of every Phantomite's dream, a testament to their dedication and passion. Prepare to be mesmerized as Phantom FX takes you on an unforgettable journey beyond the realms of imagination. for Indian film because, uh, as Ashish uh, said, um, it's, a, it's a unique try for Indian cinema. Uh, though we have seen so many uh, such characters and uh, films, uh, I know, uh, internationally released, but uh, something in Indian cinema uh, to have a CJ character in the live action uh, film, throughout the film is something very, very, uh, you know, unique and uh, it costs more for any producers in that case. So, not everybody uh, thought that this can be done. And, uh, you know, this was, uh, this is not in practice, as I said, like, you know, um, they were not very sure if it is, first of all, uh, you know, doable and uh, producers are not sure if, even if they did it, you know, they can uh, recoup the money or not. So, there were so many uh, myths around uh, all these, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> kind of films. So, nobody dared to do it. So, the very, uh, the very important thing that we had in mind is to uh, break this myth. And that was the intention behind uh, doing this film, actually. So uh, when we started this film, uh, when the director had this uh, script in his mind, I know we were not actually uh, uh, a producer. But uh, as soon as the script started growing in, and uh, the you know the producers, the actual producers were not uh, very confident, 
and they wanted to back out of this film and uh, that's when we decided that we will be a part of this and uh, we will you know back this film because we thought indian cinema needs an example and uh, you know our producers needs to see you know after seeing bahubali more people you know understood that these kind of films can be made in india and can be marketed across the world and uh, they can definitely make a very good profit also so we thought this is going to be a ground breaking idea um, and we will be able to you know prove uh, our filmmakers and the industry that something like this can be done from indian cinema as well so that is the very uh, uh, you know very first thought that we had when we uh, did ilan and uh, when it comes to ip uh, yes of course you know we uh, before even we uh, started working on this film we got the ip rights because uh, we felt that alien is a is not a creature that you know uh, you know it has to be uh, necessarily indian you know it, it, everybody knows it so it can be internationally marketed so we thought when uh, when the movie goes uh, hit and uh, of course you know the character turned out to be very cute and you know kids are all in love with it so we thought there is a huge market um, just uh, you know just not this film but apart from that we thought of doing uh, television series or cartoons and uh, merchandise and so on so we thought uh, we will have the we will own the ip so that uh, in the future we can do anything uh, with that so that is what we are doing right now we are planning to do uh, you know cartoon series based on this uh, alien character tattoo because uh, it has humor and it has uh, you know so many things you know if you if you watch the film you will know it's a, it's about it's about an alien who comes uh, you know from uh, an alien world to uh, our world and uh, struggles with all those uh, uh, you know to adapting to our our worldly culture and all those stuff so it's 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 a very funny movie um so in the second part we have an idea to uh, you know take audience to the alien world planet and show what is there and all so uh, so that's how the ip grows right you know uh, we have so much of uh, ideas with surrounding this uh, tattoo character and uh, there are other supporting characters as well so we have a great plan uh, you know with this uh, aliens film um what was your question so, again so let me ask you uh, you did leo you did many uh, you know cutting edge movies in visual effects uh, never strike you earlier that you should actually own a character or be become a participant into the production process itself there Now the very um, important thing is like uh, being a service company is just uh, you know you create lot of many things you know you put all your creativity into it but at the end of the day uh, you don't own anything of it you cannot even though you have created a character or anything uh, for a film um, you know you don't own that character and you don't have anything else to do with that character after the film's release you know only the producers have the rights and uh, even if you want to do and if you have an, an amazing idea uh, it restricts you from doing something on your own so that is a very uh, big reason that we wanted to own this character and uh, yeah of course as i said you know we have been a service provider throughout and now we've been uh, you know producing films and uh, all the films that we are producing we are looking into such ips to be owned because ip is not something uh, you know going to pay off now but it is going to pay off till the you know character is um, you know marketable and uh, and people have a very different concept uh, in india here that uh, nobody is aware of this ip uh, ownership uh, in this uh, A crowd how many of us are using windows and uh, you know not everybody understands that people might think you know when they come buy a computer it comes with it but it we have to pay a license for it you know we have to you know pay for uh, the ip that uh, whoever created that and uh, what, uh, it it goes with the all with all the softwares that we are using but in india we have a different concept of using this software yeah. so it's something similar to that so you know when somebody put their uh, soul and heart into it and uh, create something and so uh, registering an ip on their name is very very important and uh, that's what i think is uh, important and the awareness has to be created so i think thank you um, everybody for doing that <laughs> thanks bijoy my question to anamika uh, you know what's your suggestion to bijoy that the film in tamil is released now it's going to be releasing in other languages he has acquired the character rights uh, of the alien uh, so what are the other rights that he should really acquire because you can then look at uh, producing it into television series to 
multiple uh, areas um, might not be with the same producers. So what's your suggestion to uh, This is very interesting, you know, live case kind of thing. So uh, as Bijoy said, and this like struck me very well, that uh, you own the IP, correct? So what happens in most of the case, creators, like they do not give that focus of owning an IP. And when you approach to OTT platform or broadcasters, so what happens? They own the entire right. You become just a service provider. They pay you certain, you know, production fee or something. And then they own the character. And they own everything related to that. But in this case, since Bijoy has owned the character, means he has just given the license to the different broadcasters who are broadcasting, in India, in future, uh, if you are, you know, progressing to uh, other territory, then you are giving that specific territory right to a particular person. They can showcase your film, but at the same time, they do not own your film. So, as the IP is with you, now if you are giving the right, for example, if somebody is very interested in making web series based on that, you being a producer, you don't want to make the web series, you are just giving the license to that particular, again, they, you are not parting away with the owners, you are giving the license that, okay, fine, you can make the web series based on this, but I am still owning the character, I am giving you a limited license to create it, and you receive a license fee out of that. Similarly, you want to venture into, you know, some kids' uh, fantasy kind of series, you are producing that uh, series based on this character. Again, a limited license can be granted, correct? So we have to understand that there are a lot of mechanisms. There are way assignment. Through assignment, what happens? We assign the entire character. Then we do not own anything out of that. But then we have another way of licensing, where we give a limited license for a limited period of time, for a limited territory, for a limited language, so we need to, that, that's why it, uh, in the beginning only I said it is a bundle of right. And you have to dissect that bundle. So it's good to sit with a lawyer. Suppose you are, you know, uh, venturing into another aspect. Sit with a lawyer and try to dissect the right. Okay, fine. I am giving this uh, license to create a web series, a limited series. I am just giving this for that purpose, but they are not owning anything out of that. They will be receiving whatever the money they will be earning, and I will be receiving the license fee for that character. <coughs> language is again very important since we are into this international thing. Yeah. So which language are you giving? So all these things has to be, and that should be properly documented in your agreement. It is very important. Agreement plays crucial, crucial role because that is not just a document work. It defines everything. A well-documented uh, uh, agreement should be executed, and accordingly you can proceed. Yeah, thank you, Anamika. Uh, we are in the process of doing it, and uh, we are also taking this film to uh, the international arena with by dubbing into you know different languages. So we are hoping to come back to you. You know, so that's a nice business pitch. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, so now that we are into the films, uh, I would like you to play. The Chota Bheem, because uh, one of the differentiation that Rajiv has done is, uh, you know, taken a bold step of bringing Chota Bheem into live action this summer. Uh, it was released last month, so can you please play that one? Sona pur shaitha, sone ka aur jadu ka. Amyan ne pure shahar aur sona pur vasiyo ko apne kamse me kar liya. Amyan, hum tumhe shraap dete hain. Ja, dharti me kaid ho ja. I'm 
में संकट के बादल मंडरा रहे हैं कैसा संकट गुरु जी पेगी धरती थर राएगा इंसान राज करने आएगा अब दामियां मैं ऐसा कभी होने नहीं दूंगा देखते हैं तुम मुझे कैसे रोकते हो ये मेरा बेटा है वो भागता नहीं जैसा वो भगाता है जान बचाने के लिए अपनी जान को बेझिझक दाव पे लगा दे ऐसा वीर बालक सदियों में एक बार पैदा होता है In cinemas from 31st May. So we have seen Avengers. We have seen uh, how most of those characters came into live action. Now we have Chota Bhim actually into the live action. The Chota Bhim's mother is also with us today in the front row. Uh, in fact, we have very short time, but we will open it for questions and then I'll have the closing remarks uh, coming up, if you have any questions. Good afternoon. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. You can, you can go ahead. Uh, this bit about copyright, I think I had started with you in 2016 when we had a session right here, where Ashish had recommended that before you start creating, first you have a lawyer. Then you worry about exposure. Now there's something that still bothers creators like me because we don't own our sound. Somehow sound is into a IPR world of its own right. Dudes having made 700 films but all on assignments. Now am I the owner or the you know the agency is the owner or the client is the owner? You know, these little fine definitions of IPR need to come because when I make a film in an advertising film, I'm using, see advertising is all about lifting from things and using it as a piggyback, you know, to communicate. Yeah. You know, basically as a communicator, I create a lot of IPR. Do I own it or not? One, and the audio bit about it, how can we, you know, uh, share the copyright and not, you know, have it independent of our creations. So, uh, being a smart creator, I, I will, of course, have your opinion, but let me tell you what comes uh, as a creator. Unless and until you have assigned the rights uh, through the agreement or through special assignment, the right is still owned by the creator. Okay, so one has to really see that if the producer or uh, an ad agency is weak in contracting, then they can come into trouble any point in time. Because the creators in our country are not aware of their rights, that's why this question comes in. You are very correct about the sound. People pay very less importance to the sound and the copyright of the sound. And most of the, the composers today, when they give you a tune, even for a movie, uh, they keep the reuse of that tune rights with them for any other movie in the future because they are the creators. And it's very rare that uh, somebody in negotiation will give away that. And that's a prevailing practice as far as sound is concerned and the composers are concerned. So these are very well defined things. Uh, unless and until you sit with the lawyer, uh, you cannot uh, go. But what happens is you are always in a hurry as you are produce, producing. Many times you start the work and then sign the contract. That is not a right way of doing things. You please consult the lawyer every time you have a contract because it's about your rights and that's why what happens is for a whole life you are a, you are a service provider but you at the end of it you don't own anything and that's where these questions are always going to be asked. And that's why our recommendation is that you always hire, hire a lawyer and make sure you are aware of your rights and make sure that you assign your rights if 
your if if you're paid well, otherwise you license your rights. No, the point here, Ashishji, is that can we not have a law, you know, by which you know, he has a character, Chota Bhima has a character. Sometimes we create special sounds just for their entries or exit, you know. So that law exists. That's what she is trying to tell you. The law exists. We are not using that. So you start using it. It's what the answer is. Thank you. Yes, uh, there. Check. Yeah. Uh, my first question is to Ms. Chan. Um, registering uh, characters, uh, is it limited to big players like Phantom FX or uh, you know, Green Gold Studios or you know, someone like me who is a budding filmmaker who can make a short animation film and you know, sort of register characters, is that a possibility? Okay, so law is like very neutral to like may it be a big production house or may it be a small uh, producer, small uh, artist, law doesn't differentiate at all. So, of course, it is for you as well, like, but now the thing is that one is registering an artwork and another is registering a character, okay? So, artwork is like, suppose you have created uh, a char character, you can get very well go and register it is as an artwork under the artistic work category of copyright. But your artwork does not become the character until and unless you invest in that. As, a, as a, um, uh, Rajivji has said, Chota, Chota Bhim is not just limited to, you know, uh, just the drawing which you see. Yeah, It has a very distinct character and for that what he did. A lot of, you know, um, publication is required. People should connect with your character. By Chota Bhim, you just imagine every word around that character, but just, just by, you know, looking at that character. So, so you receive a character right, once you invest into the character, make it a distinct. There are, uh, you know, law does not give the uh, uh, protection very easily randomly. Yes, your drawing will be protected, but whether it, it has received a distinct character in itself, whether people have started associating with that, all these things has to be satisfied and then you receive a protection as a character. Your character further evolved into well-known trademark. I would love to talk about that as well. Well-known trademark is a stage where everybody is aware, not you know nationally but internationally with your brand. And then you receive an added layer of protection where a, even if a similar thing related to that, remotely similar, for example, Motavi. So one cannot even get that trademark because this Chota Bhim has become so prominent. So I am coming to your uh, question that yes, start with the artwork, but then start investing in your character. If, if people start knowing it and it has received a distinct feature, then you fall into secondary level, ancillary right, which is called character right. And at that stage, you shall be protected under character right. Uh, thank you very much. In fact, we are running out of uh, time, so I would, uh, I still want one minute. Uh, I would like Naman uh, to conclude uh, with his uh, remarks and uh, guide us because you, you're based in London, you look into Indian entertainment and uh, uh, Indian character brands and Indian cinema going global. Uh, I would like you to do the concluding remarks and see how these characters can go global and what are the three points uh, you can suggest that Indian characters can make it uh, global because Indian cinema tried to go global for a long period of time. But I believe animation and visual effects is going to be showing the pathway how to go global faster than the live action, I believe. Uh, what's your take on this? Um, the, the first point would be, you know, what the gentleman, uh, he said, uh, um, are these characters limited to big companies? No, the, what, what's needed is an attitudinal change. Uh, like if you're starting out as an animator like uh, yourself, uh, and suddenly you get a, a, an opportunity with a big streamer or someone, and you're quite happy to give your, your idea to them, don't do that. It, it doesn't matter uh, if... Uh, most people say, I just chance mil a no, your, your idea is your idea. It doesn't matter if you starve for a few days, own the idea, right? So that's number one. Number two is uh, once you have created the idea, try to do two things. And now it's quite difficult to do it, 
one, it should be as rooted locally as deeply as possible uh, because around the world, especially since COVID, uh, people are watching very, very local stories. If India can watch Narcos and, uh, you know, Mexico can watch, uh, you know, Mirzapur, for example, um, uh, you need to keep it rooted, but the themes must, must be universal. So again, I give you Ayalan or Chota Bhim. What are the themes? Like what Rajiv said, that um, you know, boys want to be strong. That's a universal theme. The third thing is, you need to get into the media eye, which is where uh, I come in. And how do you do this? It is, it's very difficult. You have to constantly, like if Rajiv can send emails to Netflix for four years, you can uh, harass uh, international journalists like myself till somebody says yes, right? And uh, and these are the forums where and uh, like the NFTC, IFI, etc. Meet all these people. Do it through Indian media as well, because if people don't know about your product, then it'll just remain here. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks a lot uh, again, NFTC and Information Broadcasting Industry for. Uh, you know, keeping this manthan on and I think uh, these kind of forums are going to give rise to a lot more enthusiasts and entrepreneurs who are going to actually believe in IP and taking Indian IP global. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot all the panelists. You have been wonderful. Thanks so much. Thank you so much um, to all our esteemed guests and also sincere thanks to Mr. Ashish Kulkani for guiding today's discussion and a huge round of applause for our panelists who have shared their expertise with us. We are grateful to the Mumbai International Film Festival, the Satyajit Ray Film and Television Kolkata, and the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry for bringing us all together. Thank you, audience, for your enthusiasm and participation this afternoon. This is your host, Ayushi Dholakya, signing off. Thank you.